You know, when you and I read the Bible, as we read, the way our minds work, we build a mental picture of what we're reading. And for us to identify with what the Scripture is saying and really learn from it, really get it, really connect with it, it helps if the picture that we're building in our mind is close to what actually happened. And that certainly is the case in something like the Christmas story. So I'd like to address how old was Mary, for example, when the angel came to her? If we start reading in the Gospel of Luke, for example, chapter 1, verse 26, and it says, In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph. Now, in rebuilding this picture, I mean, one of the first things we ought to notice that when angels appear to people in the Scripture, they appear as people. You know, this idea that they show up in white robes with big, huge wings and stuff. If you notice so many times in the scripture, like when the angels appeared to Lot, when the angels appeared to um, Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, or the angel appeared to Joshua, when the angel appeared to Samson's mom and then later on to Samson's dad, they didn't even know it was an angel. It was just, just dressed in the garb of the day, looked like a person, and I'm sure that's the situation here. What startled Mary was the way the angel appeared and what he said when he appeared. Because he, he appeared, the virgin's name was Mary, and it says the angel went to her and said, Greetings! You who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. <laughs> and that, that completely caught her off guard. It said she was greatly troubled at his words. But as we're rebuilding this picture in our mind, how old do we think Mary was? It was very, very common in the culture for girls to be married between 12 and 14. Maybe as late as 15, but a girl getting married at 15, that would be considered old in the biblical culture. So as you and I build the picture in our mind of what this looks like, what, what did it look like when this, this you know, powerful looking man appeared to Mary and pronounced that she was going to give birth to the Messiah, how old would she have been? 12, 13, 14 years old? And yet, what a great woman of faith and courage Mary was at that tender age. And by the way, you know, if we ask, why is it? Why didn't God just tell us how old that she was? Well, there's a couple answers to that. The, the best answer is, when something was common in the culture, God doesn't give the details of it in his word. It's just like, for example, if I... Um, if I say, yeah, yesterday I called my friend Dan Gallagher on the phone. I don't say, uh, yesterday I called my friend Dan Gallagher on the phone. Now a phone is a device that allows people, and then I go into this huge description of a phone because we all know what a phone is. In fact, sometimes in teaching children, the, the, the cultural differences can create some problems. I was, I was teaching my kids when they were young about Deborah and Barak in Judges chapter 4 and how Deborah called Barak out of Kadesh Naphtali. And my daughter says to me, what was Barak's phone number? <laughs> and it hadn't even entered my mind. But that was just when, when, I, when I read the King James Version that Deborah called Barak out of Kadesh Naphtali, then to her, if, if they got called, they had a phone number. And similarly, in the biblical world, here's a, a young, here's a girl that's a virgin that's been betrothed to be married, but who isn't married yet. And yeah, she's going to be 12, 14 years old. And if she wasn't, then the text might say something to let you know that things weren't quite normal with Mary, that she wasn't at the normal marrying age. And what do we know about Mary? Well, she was a woman of great faith and great courage. And I think, again, remember that I said, the better you understand what the Bible is actually saying, the easier it is, it, it is to connect 
with what God is saying and to learn from it. Well, what do we learn about, say, let's, let's make Mary on the late end of things. Let's say Mary is 14. Here's a 14-year-old girl that an angel appears to and says, you're going to give birth to the promised Messiah. And, and she doesn't say, oh my gosh, not me. I don't know. I wouldn't know how to do it. I, you know, she doesn't waffle. She doesn't, she doesn't um, have a lot of unbelief. She's mature. She understands what's going on. She understands who the Messiah is going to be. And she says, be it unto me according to your word. What a great example for you and me, that we can learn from examples like that because that's the way we ought to be relating to God into the Scripture. We read something in the Scripture and then, okay, God, be it unto me according to your word. And then we ought to march forth in our life and do the will of God. Now, Mary not only had Jesus, she went on and had a bunch of other children in uh, Matthew chapter 13 verses 55 and verses 56, when Jesus showed up in the synagogue, <laughs> some of the people in his hometown said, who is this guy? Isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother's name Mary? Aren't his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Um, aren't his sisters here with us? Now, if you've got Mary, and Mary was a, a woman in the, in the Eastern culture, Families were large. They wanted their families to be large. Absolutely. You had children die of various diseases and your children would support you in your old age and protect you as well as just provide for each other and protect the family. So people in those days wanted large families. And, and Mary and Joseph were blessed with a large family. They had Jesus. Then she had four other children, James, Joseph, Simon and Judas, and then she had at least two daughters because they said his, his sisters must be with us too. So Mary had at least seven children. You think of, of Mary as having seven children? She had a nice, wonderful family. Absolutely. No wonder. I mean, if you think that Jesus was the oldest when he was 12, and if, if Mary had at least seven children, then that's assuming that sisters only means two sisters. Remember when Jesus was 12, then when Mary and Joseph were leaving Jerusalem, headed back for Nazareth, it says Jesus stayed back and was talking and to the doctors in the temple and nobody even missed him. <laughs> and why not? Because Mary and Joseph would be consumed with the smaller children and at 12 years old, they're thinking, you know, in that culture, another couple years, two, three more years, and Jesus himself was going to be of marriageable age. Heck yes, he knows where the caravan is. He knows the family's going home. He can get in line and help out and be part of the solution and not part of the problem. <laughs> I'm sure that's how they were feeling as parents. But Jesus, of course, stayed back. Now, when it comes to the age of Joseph, that's much, much more difficult to determine. And the reason for that is, although it would be culturally true that, that the boys would marry 13 to 15 years old, it was also true that for a number of reasons, Men in the biblical culture uh, often married later. And there was more pressure on the women to marry young because of the childbearing years and to get them into childbearing and building families. But the men often married older. So it's a little more difficult culturally to peg, the, uh, peg how old Joseph was at this time period. We need to think when we're putting together a living manger scene or a painting or you're reading the scripture and rebuilding these things in your mind, this great woman of faith we know as, as Jesus Christ's mother, Mary, was maybe 12 to 14 years old when the angel appeared and she got pregnant and gave birth to our Lord and Savior. Music